Idris Elba is a man of many talents across many genres. His big acting break came in the TV cultural phenomenon that was The Wire, playing drug kingpin Stringer Bell in the early 2000s US crime series. Nah, man, we done worrying about territory, man. What corner we got, what project. Game ain't about that no more. It's about product. Yeah. We got the best goddamn product, so we gonna sell no matter where we are, right? Product, motherfuckers. Product. After multiple film and TV roles, he's now executive producer of Apple TV series Hijack, where he plays Sam Nelson, a man running out of time. Stay in your seats! Get down! No! Get down! You need to see this. Plain beard, of course. Someone is calling for help. Idris Elba, welcome to 7.30. Good morning, how are you? I'm good. Now, look, I binge-watched the entire series today in preparation for this interview, so my nerves are a little jangled. No spoilers for the audience. But what was the dramatic attraction to you of a hijack story? Um, well, you know, when a script gives you the same feeling that you're probably feeling now, having watched the whole thing, then you know you're on to something really good. And, you know, I, I started the journey on this with an idea. Uh, the writer, George Kay, had this idea and he wanted to sort of talk to me about what 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 what, what were my feelings on it. How, how, how would I feel about something quite simple like a hijack? And I said, great idea, but what, how can we turn it on its head so it becomes something that you've never seen before? Or you've seen hijacks before in films. And so uh, that's where the journey started, no pun. And here I am, you know, really excited to show it to the world. It's very good, it's very dramatic, it's a sort of bingey type thing. And it's escapism, pure escapism. There is something old school about the series um, for people who haven't seen it, which is given that lots of narratives now bounce around, lots of flashbacks. This is old school in the sense that it's, it's linear. What effect did that have, the real-time storytelling, have on the way you actually put the story together and directed it and, and the way it was directed? Yeah, you know, it, it allowed... It, it, you know, it's a seven-hour flight and it's seven episodes and each minute is accounted for. And, and it just really allowed us as creators to take the audience through every single decision. It's not about minutes now. It's about what do we do next? Who says what next? What happens now? And that is really what is going to run through your mind when you're sitting in a situation that is out of your control. So what should I do? What's that person going to do to me? What's going to happen to the plane? And so it really allows us to really stretch that out. And I think that's one of the, you know, it's not unique for television to show a show in real time, but it allowed me as a performer to really stretch out and really examine each and every single frame, every decision that Sam makes, everything he says. It really allowed us to really go, okay, you said that, but how does that affect that? And, you know, really put the puzzle together. The, the character that you play, it's an unusual idea. It's not a, not a character we've seen a lot of. Someone who negotiates is a, is a, deal, uh, a deal closer, apart from the series The Closer, of course. But um, how, did you, how did you research? How did you figure out how you were going to play the character of Sam Nelson? This is a guy that actually lives in the world of acquisitions and mergers, OK? And... When I did my research, it was about the personality types of these people. These people are very smart, usually have a psychology uh, background, business background, usually very good at playing host. Their job is to get people onto the same page. And that's a very specific skill set. I mean, you have some of those. You know, you're getting information from me and you're nodding and you're making sure that I keep giving you information. Well, that's what Sam's a bit <laughs> like. You know, he's very clever at pulling that information out of people and using it to his advantage. Now, one of the incredible things about you, of course, is that you had one of your biggest breaks from one of the greatest TV series of all time, the great Baltimore cop, uh, cop crime series, The Wire. It's a long time ago now. When you look back on that experience, how does it look from this perspective? I, I can't believe how incredibly lucky I was, you know, back then. To be born when I was and to be 
able to leave East London, you know, my mum and dad and travel to America and to be recognised by a casting director that decided to give me the opportunity, I can't believe how lucky I am because, you know, um, that show is one of a kind that the writers, the idea, this, what the show is about will never be replicated in the same way. So I feel very lucky that the stars had lined for me to be there at that junction. And what happened next is propel me into the world stage as an actor. Honestly, I just, it, you know, it just, it moves me emotionally to think that I was lucky to be that guy. You talk a lot about the duality of the roles that have attracted you. What do you mean by that? What is it about that either double-sided or, or, or a dual character that appeals to you? Yeah, I mean, everything's about balance and everything's about subverting what the audience think they know about you. It's part of what acting is. It's like, they look at Idris, it's like, oh, this is Idris. This is definitely Idris because I've seen him in other things. And then you've got to subvert things they know about you and then embed them and bury them into the film, into the character. So I'm hoping that when you were watching Sam Nelson, your experience of watching him and your experience of watching me now differs. That you can tell mm. that's not the same person. And that's... Uh, what duality, in my opinion, means is that there is oftentimes two different personality types, even within one character. And just finding ways to show the audience a bit of this and a bit of that and somehow bury who you are as an actor is, is part of that sort of what I mean. I did want to ask you briefly about your music career because it's so extraordinary, the intensity um, and the breadth of your creativity. Our audience will know lots of different bits of you, your, your, your rap career, um, you played at Coachella, you're a, a world-class DJ, you've played with a lot of brilliant West African musicians as well, Ghanaians and Sierra Leoneans, Nigerians. Um, but you've also played with Australians. Um, you've just done an album with, uh, with Lime Cordial. What was the appeal and how was that? Well, uh, the appeal was Lime Cordial are brilliant. They're just the most incredible, first of all, really lovely boys, but so talented. And I remember we did the first session and they were just like, yeah, come on, man, let's just get in and, and you know, do a remix of one of their songs. I was really thrilled about that. And we got to the session and they were like, so have you got any other ideas? I was like, uh, what well, I do actually, you know, I opened up my laptop and they were like, let's work on that one. And, you know, they were just really welcoming. There's none of this sort of like, oh, you're an actor, you don't know what you're talking about. They were just open to the ideas. And they gave me so much confidence. And we ended up doing a whole EP, as you say, as you know, and some of the best songs I've ever written. I was in Australia, in Sydney, making with them. It's great. You're not just an actor and a musician. There's a whole bunch of other things you do. You write, you're a podcaster, you design clothes, you were part of designing a shoe. What is the core? What's the cause of that incredible intensity in you? Do you understand it, that desire to create in so many different ways? It's freedom. I think the core is freedom. It's as in, you know, we are all able to do multiple things. It's just the level of sort of um, how locked in we are okay uh we lock things that we think we could do into pockets of fear or oh, no one's going to take me seriously or you know just like laziness and what i've sort of done with myself i think is just unlock all that and just gone no 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 you're free to do it life's about variety you know we're not here to you know tomorrow's not promised but while you're here you might as well just have some variety and just do it don't, don't lock yourself up into one pattern. Idris Elba, thank you very much for sharing all of those treasures with us. I've had a great day watching the series. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. And I hope when you get on a flight, you don't, you know, don't turn into Sam Nelson, OK? It's too late. It's too late. It's a done deal. See ya. <laughs> See you later.